EKG reading. So this week our topic is moving down on the heart. We're going to look at the ventricles and we're going to take a look at all of the different types of rhythms that can be um, propagated down in the ventricles. So some of the things we're going to take a look at is we're going to discuss the pathophysiology of a premature ventricular contraction. We call it a PVC, uh, monomorphic, polymorphic, um, tachycardia. We'll look at ventricular fibrillation, identify PVCs, um, understand what causes them. We will explain some of the treatments available. We will assess some of the clinical implications of the PVCs, um, whether it's and as well as again VTAC and VFib, and identify the difference between idioventricular rhythm and an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So to begin, when you think about anything in the ventricle, right? A ventricular rhythm, they're abnormal and it's all electrical activity originating from either from either the right or the left ventricle. So anything that happens early, early firing, we call it etopic, right? So an etopic means a cell outside. So early firing of an etopic pacemaker cell, depolarization of ventricles, and what happens when this excitement happens too early it becomes unorganized and chaotic. So it's not this nice kind of metronome, nice solid beat of contraction, it becomes very unorganized and chaotic. This can include a PVC, premature ventricular contraction, VTAC, um, towards state point, accelerated ego ventricular rhythm, and ventricular fibrillation. Some of the terminology I'm sure you've already heard, you might not be able to identify them yet. So when you take a look at a PVC, it's an atopic stimulus or a foci. A foci is a little cell, an irritable cell, an irritable foci, originating somewhere below the AV, right? So we have the SA node up high in the atrium, then the AV node, and then somewhere below that AV junction, you can have a cell and a foci that becomes irritated, and we call that an atopic stim stimuli. And it can cause a skip beat, it can cause what we call palpitations. So the ventricular depolarizes before the SA node does, and that is what's kind of what we call retrograde, kind of backwards contraction. Typically, you're not going to see any atrial depolarization occurring because the foci is down below the AV, so it's down in the ventricle, that's igniting those cells to become excited and cause a contraction. So due to the enhanced automaticity of the ventricles or an increased amount of cyclic um, AMP and the calcium, this contraction happens, this chaotic contraction happens. What a P, so a PVC is the ventricles contracting early from an excited foci, and that begins to stimulate all the other cells down the ventricle, and you have contraction of the ventricle with no, usually no atrial contraction. So we call that a PVC, and what it looks like on the paper is the PVC is wide. So the QRS is what we're talking about. When you think of the ventricle, you're looking at the QRS. It's very wide, obtuse, QRS complex. Early ventricular depolarization prior to the next normal sinus rhythm, it'll make more sense when you take a look at the next photo. Um, the T wave, opposite direction of the QRS, and usually no visible T waves. So when you take a look, this is what it looks like. Without even really knowing what you're, look, what you're looking for, this is going to pop out at you on a test, right? You see this nice looking sinus rhythm on either side of this thing, but this thing is a big, wide PVC. Right? The width of the QRS complex is very big. So what you notice on here is you see this big kind of hiccup here in the middle, this PVC. So very wide, um, early, it, it contracts early, right? This, right? So we for the timing, it happens early. There's no atrial stuff. This T wave, it's retrograde or um, in opposite direction. No visible P waves. This is what we call a PVC, right? So there's a PVC, that's what it looks like. So compensatory pause is what happens right after. Let me show you that pause, right? That long pause, that flat line is what we call the compensatory pause. Um, short duration, no electrical activity. So the ventricles repolarize next, prior to the next sinus beat. So the neck, after on that photo, I showed you sinus rhythm, PVC, pause, and it went back to a nice, really regular sinus rhythm. So the distance from the pre-PVC sinus beat to the PVC plus the distance from the PVC to the post-PVC sinus beat is usually going to be equal distance of two normal R to R cycles. So what is all that I'm saying, right? So we've got these nice sinus rhythms, we've got this PVC that happened too early, compensatory pause, and now it comes back. The distance here between all of this would have been the same, would have been the same as two normal R to R cycles. 
So here it is, right? So sinus rhythm, sinus rhythm, right? This is all nice and healthy looking. And then we have a PVC and then it goes back to sinus rhythm. So that distance there, again, is that compensatory pause of what we're talking about. When you take a look at the PVC, the clinical tip is thinking of a bundle branch block. So you might identify a PVC as a sinus rhythm with a bundle branch block, but however, the bundle branch block is a rhythm and every single QRS complex is going to be the same. That's not what you see here. So if you might think this is a bundle branch block that we talked about previously, but if it was a bundle branch block, all of these would be bundle branch blocks. But if you count the boxes, this, this, these are not bundle branch blocks. So you don't be, care, be careful that you don't identify the PVC as a bundle branch block. Each QRS will have a P wave. That's not what we have. Bundle branch blocks can have PVCs within them but we're just looking here at the difference between a PVC versus a bundle branch block. So the PVC can happen in different patterns. It can happen on a couplet, two together. It can go into a non-sustained run of VTAC. We can have what we call multifoci or multifocal PVCs, ventricular bigeminy, trigeminy, quadgeminy. These are patterns of how the PVC is appearing. Or we can have an RNT phenomenon. When you look at a couplet, the first one I gave you, a couplet are two identical PVCs back to back in concession. It's PVC, PVC, and then it goes back to sinus rhythm. When you have two identical, identical, same, they are the same, they look the same on the paper, we're going to say it's unifoci. The word unifoci means that the PVC is originating from that same cell, the same foci. So a unifoci couplet are two PVCs that are being initiated from the exact same cell that are firing twice in succession. So here we've got sinus rhythms and then we've got two PVCs. And if you look, why do we call this unifoci? The opposite word would be multifoci. But the reason this is unifoci is they're identical in shape. So it's like a fingerprint, right? Our fingerprints are the same. The cells in our heart, if it's coming from the same cell, the same foci, it's going to give us the same pattern. So this is what we call a couplet. The next pattern is, my dog is barking in the back, the next pattern is called um, non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. Non-sustained is when you have a series of three or more PVCs in a row that last not very long. It's like a little burst, so it's what we call non-sustained. So you get a run of PVCs, but what you notice is it goes back to normal sinus rhythm. This is non-sustained VTAC. So this is PVCs. Here we have one, two, three, four, five PVCs in this photo. It doesn't need to be five PVCs, but this is a run of non-sustained VTAC, compensatory pause, and it goes back into the SA node, back into normal sinus rhythm. So that's what we call, um, you know, that non-sustained, non-sustained VTAC. Dangerous, but not as dangerous if the guy would have remained in VTAC. Another pattern is that word multifoci, which is opposite from unifoci. With multifoci PVCs within the same lead that look different. So each PVC, what it means is that each of these early PVCs, these premature contractions, are originating from a different foci. Because they're coming from a different cell, a different foci in the ventricle, the shape the morphology is going to be different. So when you look at a multifoci PVC, as I have in this photo, these arrows, this is a PVC, nice big wide PVC, and over here is a PVC. They're multifoci because they don't look the same. They're coming from a different foci, a different cell somewhere in the ventral, somewhere below the AV junction. So simply this is a multifoci PVC. So um, two PVCs happening random times from a different area. Something called bigeminy. Bigeminy is now when you get a pattern. So PVC is alternating with sinus, a sinus beat. So caused by an irritable atopic foci, as all PVCs are caused, within one ventricle firing repeatedly. So what we notice here is PVC, regular, right? Here we got the sinus rhythm. PVC, regular. PVC regular. So this is the sinus node initiating and now an atopic foci. Sinus node sending the impulse, atopic foci. Every other beat is this word called bigeminy. Bigeminy, every other one. You could have it in trigeminy. 
you get what's going to happen here, right? Trigeminy is going to be every third. So sinus rhythm, PVC. Then it goes sinus rhythm, sinus rhythm, PVC. So one, two, regular, the third is a PVC. One, two, regular sinus node, PVC. We call that trigeminy. Every third beat, the identical foci gets irritated, and it begins to fire and set off. Quadgemini is as a fourth, right? You get the, the gist of that. Then we have Q on T phenomena. The Q wave of the PVC falls on the T wave of the preceding sinus beat, and it may lead to what you know as VTAC or VFib. So this is what we call the RNT phenomena. Notice that the QRS complex of the PVC is falling in the upward deflection of the T wave. So that's kind of what's proceeding and what it looks like before it goes into what we know as a run of VTAC. What's going to cause these PVCs? And really, absence of organic heart disease. So factors that promote um, any small, small um, sympath um, sympathetic nervous system changes, anything in the central nervous system. A lot of times they just happen with healthy people, idiopathic, we don't really know. Otherwise, they can be initiated with too much caffeine in the system, stress. Um, exhaustion, smoking, lots of, you know, things that we may not be aware of. Um, so there's also factors that lead to hypoxia, where you have less oxygen, alcohol, cocaine, hypoxemia, um, hypercampemia, those also can cause it. We can also have lack of blood flow, such as ischemia, right, myocardial ischemia, myocardial infarction, mitral valve prolapse, cardiomyopathy, anywhere where the actual blood flow is being compromised. And we can have electrolyte disturbances, hypokalemia, low hyperkalemia, hypomagnesium, hypercalcemium. So different types of electrolytes can also cause irritability in those cells within the heart that can lead to PVCs. Benign isolated PVCs in healthy people require no treatment. In an exercise physiology lab, we would often see a run or a random PVCs of unhealthy students, right? Idiopathic. Lifestyle management, are there any things we, we can change, anything to enhance being healthier? Pharmacological management can happen as well with some medicine. Um, and uh, I, I, ablation, so in the cath lab, if someone is having a lot of PVCs, a lot of irregular EKGs, they can do an ablation where they can um, cauterize and kind of change some of those um, aggravated etopic sites so they don't fire as much and then electrolyte replacement therapy can also be used. Monomorphic sustained VTAC is a series of PVCs that last more than 30 seconds. So slow sustained VT have no symptoms. Rapid sustained VT can be very life-threatening. It can quickly go into VFib. It can lead to a cardiac arrest. So most VT is associated, most as always, seems to be associated with underlying heart disease problems. So etopic foci in the ventricle is irritated, eventually leading to lower cardiac output because you're not having that nice, organized cardiac output happening that we see in, um, in um, sinus rhythm. We can have sustained bouts of VT that may indicate underlying coronary artery disease or a myocardial infarction. So the appearance on the EKG, every bead has a wide QRS complex with a T wave. Every bead is identical and symmetrical. Um, and generally, no visible P waves are going to happen, and the rate's usually above 100. That's what monomorphic looks like, right? So this is what we're going to say is VTAC on the test. This is a run of VTAC. Um, it is, uh, this is monomorphic because every beat looks the same. Um, it's identical and symmetrical pattern. It's coming from the same foci. Primary cause is going to be a history, usually of preses, cardiac output, mitral valve prolapse, a lot of the... Um, crazy things we've talked about before, cocaine, um, cocaine use, um, alcohol abuse, uh, antidepressants, digitalis, which is medicine. All, there's also other things that can cause it as well. The clinical significance of monomorphic sustained VTAC are looking at how they feel, right? So low blood pressure, hypotension, dyspnea, dizziness, lightheadedness, syncope, angina symptoms, um, usually needing ox oxygen therapy, usually need some medication to help not permit these folk guys to become so irritated. Sometimes they need to be cardioverted. Cardioverted is kind of when you shock somebody, like you see on TV, 
but they're still alive, so the dose is less. The, the voltage that we use to cardiovert, you kind of shock them back into, it's like your battery of your car that is not quite dead, it's turning over a little bit, but if you shock it or you jump charge it with or charge it with another car, that can reignite or reignite the engine. And our heart is the same. If someone's going into monomorphic sustained VTAC, they can do cardioversion, right? Uh, shocking the heart back into sinus rhythm is very common. Another different thing is called polymorphic VTAC, otherwise known as towards to points, twisting around the points. Curious complex that twists around the uh, um, isoelectric axis. It is associated with a condition called the QT, long QT syndrome. It's caused by electrolyte disturbances. And what you see with towards to points are QRS complexes that are asymmetrical. Very different look than the VTAC I showed you before, right? This is what we call polymorphic VTAC, right? Towards to point. It has a very, very different look to it. Electrolyte disturbances, medication, prolonged QT, um, low magnesium, high um, potassium, um, antiarrhythmic, so very, usually some really um, clear cut rationale for why somebody would go into polymorph polymorphic. Um, does not sustain runs. It can spontaneously terminate, reoccur, or go into VFib. Must be treated immediately. Usually immediate um, unsynchronized cardioversion. So what is a widow of meaning about this? This is your basic go get a defibrillator, go get the external, uh, external defibrillator, put the path patches on, and um, it's usually going to deliver a low level charge. Um, so ALS logarithm, that's advanced cardiac life support. Um, if they're in a the hospital, they are going to usually administer some magnesium to help. So three or more atopic beats, accelerated idioventricular rhythm, um, three or more atopic beats of uh, ventricular origin. The rate is um, above 40, no visible P waves, most common reasons why you see somebody with accelerated ventricular rhythm. AIVR is going to be um, lack of blood flow, so bowel ischemia, um, acute anterior inferior um, MIs, and this is what it looks like. It's a series of PVCs with a heart rate that can be low between 40 and up to 120 beats per minute. We see um, that the heart rate is slow. It's um, this is what again we call um, the the top line is AI VR versus just IVR. So accelerate it, right? This is quicker, right? That's the difference, right? Versus slower. And you kind of get the gist now that you all know how to calculate heart rate on an EKG. VFib is a really common one. I'm going to ask you a VFib, right? Rapid. Dis, um, uh, disordered arrhythms. It is usually what leads up to cardiac arrest. There's nothing identifiable. What's happening to the heart is it's simply quivering. It's kind of like a fish out of water, right? The fish is flopping around. When you think about fibrillation, I want you to think about kind of a quivering heart that's trying its best to sustain life, but it's not doing a very good job. We're not getting any cardiac output. The person is usually going to be non-responsive. We're not getting any blood out of the ventricle. Um, it, it is near death once we get to this quivering heart. So this is what we call ventricular fibrillation. Be careful on the test that you know the difference between VTAC, ventricular tachycardia, and VFib. VTAC is a run of PVCs. You're still getting a pulse. You're usually going to still be conscious. You're getting blood out of the ventricle. Right, so that was VTAP. When you look at VFib, as you see on this drawing, it is very chaotic looking. There's really nothing discernible going on. It is um, chaotic, no discernible waves, nothing looks the same. It is very, very different than the um, VTAC that I showed you, which is long sustained runs. Let me show you the VTAC. This is VTAC, right? These are the runs of lots of these PVCs. We're still getting some. Um, cardiac output here. It is definitely not safe. It's not healthy. This is VTAC versus VFib. So we have a little bit to go over of PVCs, different patterns of PVCs, multifoci, unifoci, patterns of bigeminy, trigeminy, quadgeminy, and then looking at um, VTAC versus VFib.